Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Shabab? This is the video number three for measuring the temperature and uh, studying the heat transfer devices. First of all, we need to understand the idea used to invent or to find a device to measure the temperature. There are uh, famous points or methods. There are famous methods used to measure the temperature. These famous methods are the expansion of material to give a visual indication pressure or dimensional change. Another method, electric resistance change. Another method, semiconductor characteristic change. Another method, voltage generated by dissimilarities in the material. And radiated energy method. Let's talk about measuring the temperature by expansion the material. The idea here, the material will expand by increasing the temperature. And this what will be leading to an increment in the length or in the volume of material. Famous things used based on this idea, famous devices based on this idea, glass thermometer, bimetallic strip, and pressure spring thermometer. Let's talk now about some one of them one by one. Glass thermometer. Construction of a mercury thermometer. A mercury thermometer consists of a thin glass capillary tube of uniform bore. One end of the capillary tube is blown into a small cylindrical or spherical bulb. The bulb is filled with mercury. The other end of the tube is sealed. A thick glass stem is used to protect the capillary tube. Types of thermometer. The different types of thermometer that are commonly used are clinical thermometer, maximum and minimum thermometer, and sixes maximum and minimum thermometer. Thermometer consists of a capillary tube of fine bore. It is enclosed in a glass tube on which a scale is marked. This glass tube is called the stem of the thermometer. The convex side of the stem acts as a magnifier so that the mercury thread is seen easily. One end of the capillary tube is blown into a small cylindrical or spherical bulb. The bulb is filled with mercury. The other end of the tube is sealed. There is a constriction present in the capillary tube a little beyond the bulb. The mercury passes through this constriction only when it expands due to the rise in temperature. The mercury thread remains in its position due to the constriction and the temperature can be easily read. There is a mark on the stem of the thermometer which indicates the normal body temperature. The feature for glass thermometer. Glass for a uh, glass mercury thermometer, it has certain feature. As is explained before now, it's a mercury, it's a liquid, put in inside a bulb, silver bulb, and by the expansion of the mercury, it will raise up through this tune pipe or tune, tune tube. Also, the coefficient expansion of this mercury is uh, several times greater than the coefficient expansion of glass, so that any increment in the temperature will affect in the mercury raising quickly through the tube. If you see the advantage for this type, it is the low cost and the accurate method for measuring the temperature. Used normally for measuring the temperature for the human body or even for the clients. As we saw before, there is minimum and maximum thermometer which give us the maximum and minimum temperature in the days. Now, for the mercury glasses, a thermometer, it has advantages, especially the mercury liquid inside this tube. The advantage for using this uh, mercury is what? Not wetting the glass. And because of this property of mercury, 
the mercury which is our liquid here inside the tube will traverse through the glass without uh, creating breaking uh, global or coating in the tube The operating range of mercury here, it can be run from thir minus 35 degrees Celsius to 450 degrees Celsius, or the comparative for it, th minus 30 degree Fahrenheit to 100 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, this is the advantage for the mercury, but why we are looking for the other types of uh, thermometers or other type of major uh, temperature measurement device? Simply because uh, these are, they are also disadvantage for this type of mercury. Uh, it is toxic material. Mercury, we know, is a very toxic material, uh, and also it is easy for breakage. In order, because of the requirement to make um, cost effective, accurate, and uh, digitalizing the readings. And in order to insert them inside the devices or utilizing them inside the computer uh, so uh, the requirement for creating another types more uh, other than this type of mercury is starting or it's already demanded if we use another liquid other than mercury other liquids other than layer mercury uh, we can find also some liquids that operate similar in the same principle that mercury work on it and this liquid it can create the same mercury properties also but they are non-toxic material these materials or these thermometers normally they are very accurate are very, uh, not very accurate I mean it's accurate but uh, it's okay and accuracy is a little bit uh, good in a certain degree and uh, creating different liquid inside this thermometer it gives us a chance to find um, different ranges operating range and uh, they are variating from normally so minus 170 to 330 degrees Celsius now this is the idea for measuring the temperature using the liquid inside the tube or you can say mercury thermometer famous by these names now let's go to the next type of measuring the temperature also based on the expansion of material we call it bimetallic strip thermometer A bimetallic strip consists of two pieces of different metals of the same length joined together lengthwise and riveted at their ends. The strip is straight at room temperature. Upon heating, the strips expand differently. One expands more than the other. The amount of expansion depends on its unique coefficient of linear expansion. The coefficient of thermal expansion is the property of a material that indicates the extent to which the material expands. It is also defined as the fractional increase in length per unit rise in temperature. The metal with a higher coefficient of linear expansion expands more than the other. The bimetallic strip starts bending the bar that expands more on its convex side. It is a bimetallic strip made by joining steel, a material of lower coefficient of expansion, and brass a material with a higher coefficient of expansion. Pension, place the brass bar on the lower side of the strip as shown. Now, heat the strip with the help of the Bunsen burner. Observe what happens. Observe that the brass strip bends upwards towards the side of the steel strip. It bends more and more as the temperature rises. The brass strip expands more than the steel strip as its coefficient of linear expansion is more than that of steel. Observe that the strip is concave on the side of steel, the metal of lower coefficient of expansion, and it is convex on the side of brass, the metal of higher coefficient of expansion. If the strip is allowed to cool, the brass part of the strip contracts more than the steel. 
This demonstration shows cautions that need to be taken while performing this experiment. Ensure that the two bars are firmly riveted at their ends. While heating the bimetallic strip, make sure that the brass bar is on the lower side. Ensure that one side of the bimetallic strip is clamped tightly. Make sure that the entire bimetallic strip is uniformly heated. Also, as we shown that in the bimetallic, explained now before, it can also be a strip of bimetallic but in helix shapes, like what's shown here. If you see here, Shabab, this is the bimetallic, it expands here. Not here, Shabab, it expands in this area. Again, we'll run it again. If you see, Shabab, here, concentrate here in this side. This is the uh, point that holding the rod, that this rod or stem holding the pointer. And here, this is the temperature degree 10, 15, 20, and so on, and raising up. When it is exposed, so to certain heat transfer, this metal will increase. And this increment will cause uh, some circulations here in this pivot point. Not here, Shabab. It expands here. Then it is affecting my pointer. Now, if you make the contacting, contracting now again, it's retained. Another shape for bimetallic strips is the spiral shapes. And you can see, this is the point that we can connect the rod to it. And we will see if it exposed to certain expansion according to the heat transfer or heatings up. See what will be happened. It expands and it circulated around itself now here in this point. Now he will leave the source of heat, then not what will be happened. It will return back, the shape will be changed and return again. See, it take a time, it take a circulation movement here. And we can utilize the circulation and the movement here in if the pointer is connected to this point and this point is moving in circular way as we saw now this one will lead the pointer to, re to turn around it again through the certain pivot will put some fixed certain pivot and this pointer will show us the degree change in the temperature this is one method of the use utilizing the bimetallic strip material. The advantages for this bimetallic strip uh, it's uh, rigidness and uh, cost effectiveness. It can work for long times and it is rigid a little bit and we can depend on it. But there is also a negative side for it. The disadvantage for using this bimetallic strip, it is relatively, relatively, relatively inaccurate. Also, uh, it has a slow response time. Uh, normally, it is not recommended to use it in the analog application to give a remote indication, and uh, also it has uh, hysteresis. All these things affect on it. That's why it limits the utilization of this type of uh, measuring devices. Normally, it's used in the on-off application. That does not need that high accuracy of reading or ranges of readings. Uh, operating range for these bimetallic things, it can be, be from minus 180 to 430 degrees Celsius. And uh, normally, it's used in the application oven, temperature, homes, application, and the industrial control thermostats. Also in our central, uh, our sometimes you can see in the old uh, types of um, central air conditioner, they can also can use these metallic strips. Now, let's go to the other type, pressure spring thermometers. 
let us uh, see an explanation of one of types of these pressure spring thermometers one of them uh, one of its types is the gas filled tempera uh, temperature gauge see the explanation and we will discuss it now let's begin with our today's topic that is gas filled temperature gauge so guys over here uh, in the gas filled temperature gauge it works on the basic principle of this sensing bulb inside that sensing bulb this uh, nitrogen that is called as inert gas is filled over there and uh, this there are this the mechanical system over there which is the system is fully filled with the gas that is typically nitrogen gas and whenever this bulbs uh, like uh, the temperature increases and the, this bulb senses the temperature the inert gas which is there inside that bulb it expands and as this the gas is fully filled in the system it also expands this Borden tube basically so guys this basically over here this is the connecting link which is connected from the end of the Borden tube and to the uh, mechanism that is the pinion so this connecting link due to that connecting link the pinion rotates and the pointer gives us the reading on a scale as it's shown now, uh, this is the explanation, these we call it uh, capillary tubes. It's a tube, metallic tube, filled with this nitrogen, nitrogen gas. And he mentioned here as armor. There is armor. This is the armor shape. This is the armor shape around this capillary tube. And this is the location of the sensor here, that he is explained here. And as we saw, this is the pointer, which is here. And based on these connections, if this Borden tube expand, it will hold it up. Then the gears will change the direction of pointer to indicate to the more temperature degree. As shown here, Shabab. Uh, these Borden tube types, we call it armor one. Also, as you see this uh, armor one, uh, it's capillary tubes so this is the advantage of this type really we can put the sensor here in one location and we can put the gauge in very far location remote mounting this is the advantage see so uh, maybe we can put uh, around three meters even 20 meters for all these gas to go from this sensor site location until the gauge location the other type of capillaries, we call it covered capillary. This is the covered type capillary. If you notice here, there is not that such armor around it. There is no armor here around it. It's similar, the same principle, same thing. But the difference here, this one just only, just only the tube, the capillary tube. Of course, most of the time, this tube, both of them, they are should be in flexible material. So it is a gas filled inside a flexible material or metals. Now, just let's talk about a little bit about uh, advantages of these types. This device can be accurate until 0.5 percentage and can be used for remote indication, as we mentioned before, until 100 meters. Uh, the disadvantage is need calibration frequently very high frequent uh, calibration comparing to the other devices also as the system and board and tube are also exposed to the temperature sensitivity so that change in the port tube expansion because the temperature effect it's also a source of error so we need to make calibration frequently this is the disadvantage of it we mentioned that there are types of uh, pressure spring famous types uh, liquid filled inside the tube we fill it by a liquid uh, the principle of working here is similar to that glass thermometer but here instead of seeing the glass uh, the liquid going through the tubes this transparent tube no it will just derive the board and tube shapes also the device has good linearities and accuracy which can be comes until uh, 100 it can be read until 150 550 degrees celsius there are also other types we call it vapor pressure mixed between gas and liquids 
the response time for this one is slow uh, also uh, the temperature bra characteristic of this thermometer is non-linear normally sometimes we utilize this one it's very rare utilizing by the way utilize it is very rare but sometimes in order to utilize this type of pressure we can utilize it in uh, some non-sensitive non-critical application also to take uh, very low cost uh, devices but it's not recommended and the um, uh, high accuracy or critical applications the third type gas field that we already explained it all of them the same principle forking just the difference here in the material inside the tube gas field it is also a tube filled with the gas normally the typical type is nitrogen uh, the range of this pressure comes from 1000 until 3350 kilopascal at room temperature. The device obey the basic gas law for constant volume system. We will explain it later, inshallah, in the formulas uh, part. So, by applying the gas law at a constant volume system, it will give us a linear relationship between absolute temperature and pressure. This is the benefits. Linearities. This is the benefit of using this gas field. It's linearities relation between the pressure and uh, the temperature. And you show us uh, how can you utilize it in order to take linear uh, reading of temperature. This is the benefit of these three types. Now, gentlemen, uh, this is the end of this uh, video waiting for me for the next video explaining for other devices used for measuring the temperature thank you for listening and waiting for the other assalamu alaikum